गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन गुड मॉर्निंग डॉक्टर नाउ we are going to start uh we are going to begin our class today uh by continuing with chapter 2 huh? uh apparently i noticed that um there are some notes i'm supposed to normally during physical class right uh students would have to uh, get a copy of the coastal and harbor engineering Uh, notes, um, but actually they are further information in the notes. However, my slides that I've given you, uh, probably I will I will try to add some more information lah, just to compensate for the notes, right? The hard copy one. Um, I still couldn't find the soft copy of the notes, but I'll try my best. If I found it, I'm going to upload it as soon as possible to you for you lah. Uh, therefore, that's why I just realized that you couldn't uh, solve your assignment too, since um, I didn't give enough information. But um, anyhow, I've already included in the slides, lah. Alright. Um. Now, uh, let's look at our slide. Uh, our lecture notes, eh? Hmm. Uh, just to confirm, now you are looking at my slide already, right? Yes, doctor. All right. Uh, only, only Yan Ting keep answering me. How about the others? I hope the other will chip in as well. Huh? All right. Um. Now, are you still able to see my slide? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. How about now? If I draw a circle on the page. No, there's nothing on the page. Alama. Okay. <laughs> Because I'm using laptop today, ah, uh, therefore there might be some um, you know, ah, uh, things that you can I cannot show. Ah, uh, it's fine then. What I'm going to do is, I think I'll just going to, ah, uh, use the normal slide. Okay, now. Okay then. Ah, uh, you are looking at ah, uh, you know, definition and generation of type, right? Correct. Anyone? You still you you okay again okay now. Um, here's the thing, eh? Ah, uh, we have looked at you know, ah, uh, the difference of ah, uh, you know, waves, the the different type of wave, the classification based on you know, ah, uh, several um uh, uh, classifications that we have. Ah, uh, today we are going to look at ah, uh, tides, generation of tides, and ah, uh, the various types of tides, and then. Ah, uh, we are going to look at current generation of current as well. Okay, ah, uh, then we'll finish off our chapter two with some ah uh, calculation on how we are going to determine, um, uh, you know the range of ah uh, tides and so on. Okay, um, now let's look at what this tide is about. Eh, ah, uh, now how does this tide being generated? It is generated due to gravitational. Attraction, eh, between the Earth, and uh, the the Moon and the Sun, as well as it is affected by the local bathymetry, which I told you is similar to our land topography, eh, but uh, it is of course it is measured from uh 
bottom of the sea to the uh, mean sea level. Eh? Uh, that is your local bathymetry. And the shape of basin. Basically, the basin under the sea. Lah. All right. Okay. Um, now, if you look at figure 2.7. Okay. Uh, figure 2.7, it shows three different generation of tide. So, you have the first set of figure. You have sun, nip tide, moon and earth. Uh, that is, uh, here's the thing, eh? the moon is located a quarter, alright, from the sun and earth. Okay, at the position, the sun and moon lah, at the position, alright, of quarter with the earth. Meanwhile, figures of set 2 and 3, alright, the diagram of, uh, the second diagram and third diagram, eh, the bottom part, eh, is when the sun, moon and earth are aligned. That means uh, they, are, they are located on one line, lah, basically. Eh. Okay, now, when it is on quarter, alright, moon could be at the below, below of, Earth, uh, at the diagram, uh, it is known as nip tide. When the earth, moon and sun is aligned, either um, moon, earth and sun, okay, they are on one line, spring tides will be generated. Now, what's the difference between nip tide and spring tides? Is spring tide is higher then nip tide why is that because spring tide uh, because the um, gravitational pull of the sun and moon are stronger when they are aligned with the earth right uh, compared to when they are at lo the location a quart uh, at the location of quarter lah basically right uh, with uh, the earth right so that's why uh, you have the different type tight there, eh? the nip tight and spring tight. Spring tight is la higher than nip tight. Alright? Now, um, here's the thing. Eh? Uh, this slide here explain uh, it says, eh, if you look at the formula in the middle there, it says the force of tight generation eh, is proportional, directly proportional to the mass divided by distant cubic power. So, here's the thing. The force is caused by the pull of the moon and sun. Now, between the sun and moon, right? So, below that, we are actually calculating uh, which either moon or sun which has the more, more force. Uh, gen uh, tidal generating force. So, um, if you look at that, the note there, right, the sun has 27 million times more mass. However, it is 390 times further away from the earth than the moon. Alright, so they are comparing, the next line is actually comparing, alright, the force of the sun uh, relative to the moon, eh, that would generate, uh, that would uh, that would produce force which would generate the tide. Uh, after the calculation, right, it seems like the sun only produces 46% relative to the moon force. Alright? So basically, what it, this says is the moon, the moon is actually has, uh, in relative with the moon, that means the moon has 100% of force, compared to the sun which has only half or 46% of the uh, tidal generation force. So therefore, uh, the moon has uh, more force, tide generation force, alright? Okay. It, the moon basically has greater influence lah, alright, on the tide. Okay, now, um, of course, how does the tide being generated when you have uh, moon and sun gravitational pull, right? Well, you can't really see it, okay? Um, it, it's just that, you know, the tide itself would be, would have the pulling effect, lah, basically, right? 
uh, that's why it's, it start to uh, uh, you 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 start to have high tide and low tide all right so you have the tidal bulge there that means there will be high tide all right uh, consequently right on the other side all right you also have a tidal uh, bulge uh, when they when you have this gravitational pull right the other side would have the opposite uh, uh, effect as well due to inertia all right so you have high tide there all right and the one on the northern and uh, southern hemisphere you will expect to have low, lower tide lah due to the uh, in this case all right when the moon is uh, aligned with the um, earth now what are the the types of uh, tidal waves huh? uh, of tides all right here's the thing um ocean tide can be classified into three types eh? okay the first type is dynal tide dynal tide basically has one high and one low water per tidal day what is tidal day one tidal day is 24 hours now look at the scale on top of your uh, record there you have 0 6 12 18 then it's supposed to be 24 or when you start the next day it should it can't become zero back lah all right so it it either represents 24 hours or zero hours eh um so that makes it one whole day. Now, if it's one whole day or 24 hours, right? If you look at the record, eh, this record is actually the surface elevation uh, against the time. All right. You have hours, right? On your X axis, your Y axis is the height uh, or surface elevation against the datum. Lah. Datum could be mean sea level. Eh? Now, here's the thing. We did that 24 hours. You have one high tide and one low tide. So this is known as dynal tide. That means you have one high and one low uh, tide within 24 hours. And the same thing as the next 24 hours. So this record actually shows 2.5 days. Lah. All right. You have um, uh, 48. You have um, uh, 50, 60 hours here. All right. Okay. Um, now. The next type of tide is known as semi-dynal tide, which has too high and too low water per tidal day. Now, let's look at the diagram. Eh? Within that, the first 24 hours, okay, you have too high or you, you can observe too crest, right? Okay, and too trial. Well, we are using crest and trough for waves, lah, basically. Eh? This is tight. Eh? Okay, so you have two highs and two lows within 24 hours. So, therefore, it is known as semi-dynal tides. Alright? The same thing happened the next uh, 24 hours. Alright? And this is also the record of 60 hours, eh? 2.5 days. Now, next, you have mixed tides. Now, mixed tide is um, is the uh, basically the uh, mix between semi dynal and dynal tides. Now, what's the difference eh, between mixed tide with dynal and semi dynal? If you look at the first twenty four hours, okay, you have two high tide and two low tide. However, one high if you look at the high tide first, eh? you have two high tide, right? One is higher than the other one. Or one the, the one recorded at 12 hours, right, is actually lower than the one recorded almost at the uh, 24 hours. The same thing uh, you can observe for the low water. Uh, you have one is lower low and the other one is higher low water. Alright, so it it. The same pattern also can be observed at the next 24 hours, alright? So, one tidal day is in fact actually 24 hours lah in this diagram it shows, okay? So, therefore, this is known as mixed tides, alright? Uh, we are going to look at, you know, uh, record of mixed tide, uh, some example of record of mixed tide on the next slide, right? Now, here, here is 
some more examples on mixed side yeah okay the top diagram okay uh, before that on your y axis is the height eh? the surface elevation on your uh, x axis is the duration in time eh? days the first diagram on the top is the semi diagonal record eh? semi diagonal you know is uh, too high and too low right within 24 hours within a day the the one at the bottom is the dynal type. That means it has one high and one low within a tidal day, within 24 hours. All right. Uh, it, remember, this is uh, on your y x, x axis is the time in days. Huh? All right. And then in between, you have mixed type. However, the first one, the, the one, the second one, eh? the second one. Even though it's mixed, but you can see most of them are in semi diagonal form. Okay, you, you can see uh, uh, more uh, in terms of, you know, higher, uh, higher high uh, water, lower high water, uh, lower low water, and higher low water. Okay, most of them are in that form. And then the third set of record, you can see mixed type. However, most of them are or predominantly are in diagonal form. That means most of them are, you can observe uh, uh, two, what I mean is two, um, you can, uh, sorry, diagonal form. You can observe one high and one low within a day. Okay, so that means it's predominant diagonal form. Lah. All right, the second one is predominant semi diagonal form. All right. Okay, so you have uh, the difference of mixed side there. But of course, uh, figure 2 and 3 are known as uh, mixed side as well. Okay, now that is, uh, we have looked at the classification of type. Now this slide shows uh, the generation of uh, current, ocean current, eh? Now, how does this current move or being generated? Okay, now, we know that the earth rotate from east to west, right? Okay, that means from your left to right. Lah. Okay, if you look at the uh, globe at the bottom uh, at the bottom of the slide, right? Okay, it moves uh, from uh, east, east to west. Eh? Alright, now, if you are on the northern hemisphere, right? Okay, uh, you, you could, if you move from uh, your east to west, right, actually there is a correlates effect, all right, that moves. If you are on top, you feel like it's actually moving on clockwise, okay, it's being deflected clockwise. And if you go to your southern hemisphere, all right, it seems like it is, you know, the current or, you know, any object is being deflected counterclockwise. Okay. Therefore, all right, this effect, all right, uh, is called Coriolis force. And that this Coriolis force would cause, you know, the current to move on the northern hemisphere. The current would move clockwise. And southern hemisphere, it will move uh, counterclockwise. All right. So this would generate the current lah. Another uh, force, okay, that would cause the motion of the sea water or ocean would be uh, due to the differential in uh, density of the sea, ocean. All right. Now, um, if you look at this diagram, right, which is the conveyor belt, lah how the current moves all right due to the differential in temperature of course it has uh, it would also affect the density all right uh, the temperature will affect the density of the uh, uh, flow okay of the current uh, if you look at um, here's the thing eh? uh, when the water is being warm at pacific right okay 
it would tend to move to your if you look at this diagram to to the atlantic ocean right where it, it is going to be cool, cool down then it will sink okay it will sink then it as it moves as it sink forward it will move back to pacific where where it is if, where it is being warm again and then this belt keeps moving okay so that's why you have this ocean that keeps moving all right uh, apart from due to the Coriolis force effect just now right so this is how um, the current is being generated or how the uh, mass of ocean moves all right okay um now this is uh okay uh this would end our chapter two basically eh? um, but i for your assignment two eh? um for uh, question one two three i think you can you are able to do it now today class what i'm going to uh, help you out with is your assignment two question four uh, because uh, I didn't give enough information and I realized that uh, I you didn't have the hard copy of the lecture notes eh, which have put more information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to help you out for this question. Um, and your test one uh, would also have similar question. Eh? Uh, it could be the different one but of course all the information will be provided to you. Lah, okay. Now. Uh, let's look at question four. Um, you have learned about what is uh you know, um, high low lower high water, lower low water in your mixed type just now right? So we are going to look at it. Eh? Uh, you also learn about what is nip tide and spring tide right? If you look at the terminology that I use, uh, M L W S, it has to do with your uh, spring tide eh? uh, if it's uh, MLWN which is not given here it's your nip tide okay so that's the difference but of course there is a table that I'm uh, in the next slide that I've, I've given I'll be providing you lah all right that uh, give you the abbreviation that explain the abbreviation of the of, of uh, the one that I'm using now now the first part of the question, eh, question four, eh, uh, it asks you to describe what type of tides at Kedah Pier and Tanjung Gelang. Now, apparently, eh, for Kedah Pier, uh, there is no data available for Kedah Pier, so the the nearest port would be the Pulau, the Penang lah. All right, the Penang port. Okay. Uh, now I should skip this first. Okay. This is the one. Um, now, one question. Is this uh, figure clear to you? Table 2.1. Is no. uh, Are you able to see the table clear? Clearly? Too small. Okay, is it? You can see all the numbers, is it? I'm very small. Very small, okay. But uh, I'll be providing you this, all right, later. Okay, I'll give I'll give this to you. Okay. Uh, then of course I'm going to upload this uh no, this video so on YouTube so you can uh you know go through it again. Now. Uh, table two point one right gives you tidal levels as standard port. Of course, this is a particular date of publication lah. Okay, I'm just giving you an example lah. Uh, if you look at here, there is no Kedah port, alright? So, we, are, we will be looking at Pulau Pinang lah. Okay, now, if you look at the standard, uh, the, the table uh, on the first row, it gives you lowest astronomical type, LAT, and then uh, the third column is mean low water spring, which is MLWS. And then you have mean low water nip, MLWN, and so on. Okay. Now, the second, the ta second table eh, below it, it is the same. Eh? It says standard port 2. Alright, but the one, the data on 
within the column is different, eh? a bit. It gives you LAT, lowest astronomical tide, but it has mean lower low water, mean higher low water. So there's a difference there. Eh? That means the first, the top table actually is your uh, semi dino and the one on your bottom is your mixed tide. Because only mixed tide has, you know, higher low water, lower low water. Alright, so that's the difference. That's why Tanjung Gelang, alright, the classification of the tide is actually mixed tide. Eh? Okay, let's go back. Now, so based on that table, okay, you can actually know that, you know, Kedah Pier, which is available on the top of the table, right, is actually semi dinal tide based on, you know, the data provided. And Tanjung Gelang, how you recognize it because you, you have uh, higher, uh, high water, lower, high water and so on. Eh? So it is categorized as mixed tide lah, right, to have mixed tide. And then, um, now, for this um, second part of the question, eh, uh, it asks you to, to determine tide, tide range eh, at Kedah Pier and Tanjung Gelang. Well, the range should be, of course, if you are looking at nip tide, you should look just at nip tide, but you are, you need to find the range between lower water nip, alright, and higher water nip tide, okay? So, if you look at, you know, the table given for Kedah Pier, right, okay, higher water nip would be 1.8, okay? meter and lower is 1.3 so you have the difference uh, you take the difference it will be 0 0.5 meter that's how you find the range eh? the same thing for spring tide as well you you are going to look at mean higher water spring which is 2.6 then the lower water spring will be 0 0.6 that means the difference is 2 meter all right so that's the range lah and then how about the range for, um, you know, uh, the mean range, okay? The mean range of, that means the mean of nip with and spring and the mean, uh, sorry, yeah, again, the mean of high water of nip and spring and low water of nip, nip and spring type. Okay, so basically you... Take the average of the high tide between nip and spring and the average of low tide of nip and spring. So you average them up together, you find the, the range. So you have there 1.25 meter. Lah. All right. Uh, I wanted to ask you, are you clear so far on this question? Hi guys. Yeah, clear. Okay, yeah. clear. Okay. <laughs> All right then. Uh, I should call up eh, somebody to answer my question. Just to check on you, right? Okay, this is the table that I've shown. Okay, Pulau Pina and Tanjung Gelang. Eh? And then, okay. Now, uh, oh, just now we are actually looking at Kedah uh, Pier eh, or Pulau Pinang. Uh, and we need to find the same range for Tanjung Gelang as well. Eh? Uh, of course, uh, for lower range, you have uh, you just look at, uh, you know, uh, lower range means you are looking at low high water and high low water. You get the smaller range basically. Okay, higher range means. That means you are looking at the highest tide and lowest tide. That means you are looking at mean high, higher high water and mean low, uh, lower low water. Okay, that means you, you are going to get your higher range lah of one tide. Uh, uh, the lower range, that means you are going to get the lowest range of uh, one set of tide lah. Okay, so you have that, you have there. Uh, you know the mean lower range is 0 0.4 meter and the mean higher range is 1.9 meter lah. and how are you going to get your mean range is you take the average 
uh, to get mean of high water minus the average of uh, low water. Okay, so you have that your mean range, uh, which is equal to one point one five meter lah. Uh, you, I I know that it's hard for me to explain uh, to you online because I cannot really sketch or you know um, write on it. I, I it seems like I have problem using this laptop. Okay, uh, it's just that you have to try your own lah. Okay. Uh, just don't look at the answer yet. Try it on your own. Then you should be able to understand it. It's not that difficult. Huh? Now, third part of the question, okay, is it asks you to convert the tidal levels, the specific tidal levels, huh, which is MLWS, uh, mean lower water spring, mean sea level, mean higher water spring at Kedapia, convert it to... Uh, based on uh, LSD, eh? uh, sorry, based on ACD, which is at mineralty chart datum, eh? ACD and mineralty chart datum, as well as for Tanjung Gelang, you have to convert MLLW, MSL, and also mean low, uh, mean lower high water eh? at Tanjung Gelang, all right, to the LSD as re reference datum. Now, let's look at eh, one example. Uh, here's the thing. Eh. Uh, in question 3, Kedah Pier, the emirati chart datum is 1.42 meter. Meanwhile, for Tanjung Gelang, the emirati chart datum is 1.62 meter below LSD. All our data just now given, uh, the you know, the MLW, MHLW and the rest is actually based on L LSD. The question asks you to translate all this level, okay, use, using ACD. That means you are going to read it based on L ACD instead of LSD. Eh? Alright. Now, Let's look at one uh, Kedapia first, all right? One part first, which is the Kedapia. Now, based on ACD, right, you have this table given to you. LAT, MLWS, MLWN, MSL, MHWN. Uh, you have uh, this a set of NIP and spring tide, lah, basically. Eh? Uh, LAT is the lowest astronomical tide. HAT is highest astronomical tide. Now, you have this. And it's given that ACD is 1.42 meter below LSD. So you are, you have to read this based, based on LSD. Uh, uh, ACD, you have to below LSD. Okay. Ah, you have to read all this based on land survey datum, eh? LSD. Like LSD is land survey datum. Because sometimes if you want to do construction, for example, uh, uh, near at coastal area or you are going to have uh, you know you are going to build uh, anything uh, on your coast coastal area okay uh, you are going to have uh, your tidal level based on LCD land survey term lah, basically right so that's why you need to convert all those to LSD uh, now uh, in order to convert this it's simple eh Basically, all of them, you have to read it based on the 1.42 meter. Uh, I have this diagram here, right? The lines that I will show it to you. Now, right now, the table gives you all this value based on ACD. Okay. And then your LSD is above ACD as much as 1.42 meter. Now, how are you go going to convert your MLS? MLWS, MSL, MHWS based to, to be based on LSD. So therefore, am I right to say I have to have all my values, either MLWS, MSL, MHWS, all my value there to minus 1.42 meter. So I'll get the difference, right? Which I could actually read it from LSD. You see my MHWS, uh, the simpler, a simpler example would be, we are, let's look at MHWS. 
So, right now, MHWS is 2.6 meter based on ACD. If I'm going to read it based on LSD, that means I'm, I need to find the difference, right? That is based on uh, LSD, which is 2.6 minus 1.42 meter. Then, I have a value which I can actually read it, uh, which is read from LSD. Okay? So, therefore, you have there all values, uh, you have to minus 1.42 meter. So, there you have it. MLWS is minus 0 0.82 LSD because it's below your land survey data. Your mean sea level is 0 0.18 meter based on LSD and your MHWS is 1.18 meter uh, LSD. Okay, so far so good, eh? Uh, Akila? Is Akila there or Akila Idayu? Akila, are you clear about this question? I couldn't hear you though. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, yes, okay. Nor I, nor I, I know your internet is, you are having problem right with your internet. Are you clear about this? Nor I, ask me. Okay. <laughs> nor I, are you there? Okay, then it's fine then. Okay, let's look at uh, Tanjung Gelang question. Now, how are you going to convert the same thing eh, to, uh, to your LSD? To be read based on LSD. Okay. Uh, so, you have this, uh, L, all these, uh, you know, uh, readings based on ACD. So, in order to convert it based on AC, LSD, right, uh, if you are clear about the concept, you don't need to draw all this line out. I just draw, I, I drew it just for the purpose of explaining it. So, you, you would understand why I minus it, right? The same thing here. If I want to read it from my LSD, you would see I, I need to have all the my values, right? I have to minus 1.62. Then I'll get the difference to be re referred uh, with the reference to my LSD, right? So therefore, my LLW, right? I have uh, 0 0.9 and minus 1.62. Then I'll get the difference between my LSD and my MLLW. So... Uh, for MLW is actually below LSD, so it should be minus lah. Uh, for Tanjung Gelang, you have minus 0 0.72 meter LSD. Then for MSL, I have, uh, you know, I have the difference. Uh, then I have uh, my MSL, which is 0 0.28 meter, which I read it from uh, with reference to LSD. MLHW is, uh, if you minus 2.1, minus 1.62, then I have uh, 0 0.48 meter LSD lah, basically. Yeah. Okay, now, uh, so far, do you have any question? Uh, I think this is the last, uh, this is actually the, my last slide already for today's class. Uh, next week, we are going into chapter 3 already. Now, uh, bear in mind that your test 1, which would be at the end of week 7, eh, uh, would also include chapter se uh, chapter 3, but uh, only until the part of where you have to calculate your velocity, which we will look at it uh, next week. So, don't worry, you still have time. Eh? Uh, then, the week after that, uh, you are going to have your test 1. Lah. Okay. Um, now, so far, do you have any questions? 